All right. Um, so can you all hear me? I'm not sure if I can see the chat feature. Hold up. Uh -oh. um, but I'm here and we're here and I see a few people on. And so we're going to go. Ah, there we go. All right. Great, 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 great. All right. So. So I'm I'm doing this from my phone, which is totally OK. We're just going to make it happen. Um, and so today I'm so excited to present to you um, this session on strategize forward um, strategic approaches to envisioning um, healthy churches. And so, as I said, again, I'm Kerry Goodman. I'm a strategic and development consultant, and I've had the opportunity of working with the Bomb and Gilead for the last um, almost 15 years um, and where we have uh, worked exclusively with um, the faith community to address public health um, concerns. And so today, I'm so excited about this um, opportunity to share because in listening um, to some of the other sessions earlier, um, it, it, it shifted a lot. And so um, uh, the objectives of today are to discuss effective strategies um, that can be implemented um, in churches, identify measures um, to ensure sustain sustainability, and also share some best practices um, to empower churches. And so my disclaimer um, that I put, um, and so I put my disclaimer that, you know, after listening to some sessions is um, this session is subject to shift at any moment. And so I just tell you to be ready for that because um, this is a great opportunity for us to share um, share um, a, lo a lot you know, of what we're doing. And so um, um, understand this, and I think this will be our launch pad for our conversation on today. Um, the healthiest, the healthiness of your church is not predicated on food and exercise. Let me say that again. The healthiness of your church is not predicated on food and exercise. I think I'm gonna say it one more time. Um, and as you're in the chat box, I can see it now, just chime in at, at your leisure. But let me say this one more time. The healthiness of your church is not predicated on food and exercise. Why do I say that? I think that's so important to, um, to share because there are so many people um, that have, um, when they think of health and health ministries and the, and the health of their churches, they immediately go to um, health and wellness or food and nutrition or exercise, um, what my congregation can do um, to make better choices. Where that, that is super important, um, that is not um, the, the end all be all of um, your healthy church. And so, um, one thing that we must do um, to ensure that we are um, envisioning healthy churches is we must understand who our audience is. You need to know who your audience, who is your audience. Um, and so when you look at um, churches, there, there's a two-pronged approach that I always like to, to share. Um, and that two-pronged approach is we need to look at it from um, the lens of congregation as well as community. That's, that's so important. When you're looking at um, um, looking at what your who your audience is, you must understand um, that it is a two prong approach. What are the two prongs? It is your congregation, but it is your community as well. And so, um, congregation. The congregation is those who we worship and serve in ministry with. Those who we worship and serve with in ministry. That's who our congregation is. But when we look at our community, our community is um, those who share geographical space with us. 
Now, um, I'd love to challenge that a little bit because um, when you think of community, and I love to use this, you are a part of your community, regardless of where, where it is. So um, I'll use Richmond, uh, Virginia, for example. Um, we, we divide Richmond really into to four, uh, four areas. It's the north side, south side, east end, and west end. Um, but then we have our our, our bordering counties um, that border the 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 city of Richmond. Um, and so, if you live in the north side and you travel to the south side, you are representing the community where you reside. And so, when you look at um, look at your congregation or your churches, you must keep that in perspective because the persons, they, there used to be a time historically where um, many people um, went to or they were members of the churches in their community, but that has since shifted. Um, and so many people travel a distance to, um, to worship. Now, of course, we're in, you know, a pandemic, so many people are not um, traveling anywhere. They're worshiping um, from the comfort of their homes. And so um, we must still keep in mind the community perspective when we're looking at um, who our audience is. Another component of who your audience is, um, is your age demographic. So many times when we are operating in ministry um, or, you know, doing, you know, creating programs for our, our, our churches, um, our lens can sometimes be uh, slighted because we're thinking of one age demographic. But we also have to keep in mind that there are persons who are older as well as persons who are younger who are worshiping with us. And so when we're developing programs, we have to keep that in mind because there are, you know, we have to make sure that we are um, meeting the needs of uh, multi-generational um, persons. And so that, that, that's another key component to keep in mind when we're looking at, um, you know, envisioning healthy churches. Who is your audience? Um, so your con congregational approach as well as the community approach. And so um, on my slide deck, and we'll make sure that you, you get it, um, I have a picture of a gentleman with a COVID mask on and the a tag that says a picture is worth a thousand words. And so um, in today's society, um, we have normalized uh, wearing masks. We have normalized wearing masks um, by governmental mandates. Um, it, it is because there is a global pandemic and we want to make sure that our, you know, that everyone is safe. Um, and so I put this on there for, for a very specific reason, because when we look at healthy churches, um, we have to, and I, I mentioned before about us looking at, um, looking at, uh, health and wellness or food and nutrition as the, the the launching pad that many churches have for when they envision health, you know, health ministries. But one thing we must um, keep in mind that there are so many health disparities um, that our congregations are faced with that we must start to normalize conversations around health. Um, and it can be, you know, a large gamut of conversations. And that's where we come in or where I have come in uh, many times, you know, churches, they want to do something, but they don't know what to do. And so this is your opportunity. Um, and we'll talk about, you know, we'll talk about it a little bit further, but this is your opportunity to really think about what it is um, that you want to do in order to um, embrace healthy churches. And so um, understanding, you know, with COVID-19 right now, you know, African-Americans are disproportionately impacted by COVID-19 um, as well as vaccines. I mean, so we must start normalizing conversations around health. I am so appreciative um, of COVID and, and the things that it has afforded us um, because uh, it allows us the opportunity to really share um, more conversations around health. It allows us the opportunity to share more conversations around health. And many 
uh, churches were not having health related conversations until we were all faced with a uh, pandemic. And so uh, that's the, 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 the plus that I, I like to say, because, you know, we have normalized talking about uh, a pandemic, something that directly impacts our health. We've talked about, we normalize talking about, um, you know, the disparities, the deaths and everything. And so, and we've also normalized what you must do in order to prevent this uh, uh, pandemic from impacting you and your community. And so um, with that, the first point that I want to, to highlight is in order to, um, or the first strategy, in order to envision a healthy church, you must be very clear on the need. Um, what I love doing and working with churches is um, doing needs assessment. A needs assessment is a sure way to gauge the precise needs and desires of the congregations and communities you serve. Um, why is this important? I say this is important because um, in order to have um, impactful conversations, you must understand um, what, what your congregation is faced with. But also, you must understand what your community is faced with. Um, if you partner with uh, some groups at like the health department or different community based organizations in your area, um, they are able to assist you with uh, such things as community maps or geo maps. Um, that's another term that's being used. Um, a community map basically gives you a landscape of what your community is faced with. So if there's poverty, they can pinpoint the different areas in zip codes um, that are hit the hardest with um, with poverty, food deserts, you know, uh, 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 whether it's diabetes or, you know, high blood pressure, because uh, when you go to the doctor, the doctor's offices or the medical facilities um, have the opportunity to um, uh, produce data or to give data so that health departments can um, do different assessments of the areas. Um, so that, that helps because you're able to identify funding, you're able to identify more resources. Um, for instance, if you're uh, faced with food deserts, there are a uh, community-based organizations that partner with local farmers and, you know, local food banks that in um, different uh, uh, foods and produce to those food desert areas. And so being very clear on your need, it helps you gauge what the needs as well as the desires of the congregation as well as the community. So when I look at it from a congregational perspective, I'm looking at it from um, the point of what are the health disparities or what are the health issues that the members of your congregation are faced with? Now, um, we have many churches have normalized uh, such Sundays as Go Red Sunday or Go Pink Sunday for Breast Cancer Awareness. And so there are so many more um, observance days that we uh, essentially neglect because we feel as if they are not, um, we are, we're not impacted by them. And so um, that, that I definitely want to say is 1000% false because you never know what somebody in your congregation is dealing with. Let me say that again. You don't know what health-related uh, issues or challenges that someone in your congregation is dealing with unless they have been very upfront with you um, or you know them on a personal basis. And so a needs assessment helps um, create the narrative around the health issues 
um, that your congregations may be faced with. But the great thing about a needs assessment is it is done anonymously. So there's not an opportunity for you to uh, put a name on it. Now, such information as uh, birthday, yes. Uh, your gender, yes. Um, your nationality, yes, because those are key factors in um, crunching data in order to um, understand better the, the needs of your congregation. And so the next thing um, that I think is so important, the next strategy I think is so important um, to envision healthy churches is be vision centered. Let me say that again. Be vision centered. Um, we know a vision is a practical guide for creating plans, setting goals and objectives, making decisions, um, and coordinating and evaluating the work on any project, large or small. A vision also helps keep organizations and groups focused and together. And so I love, I love, I love whenever I do presentations, I love uh, sharing one of my favorite scriptures. Um, it is a Habakkuk, the second chapter, um, second verse. It says, then the Lord answered, the, answered me and said, write down the vision and inscribe it clearly on tablets so that one who reads it may run. Why do I love this scripture and why do I associate it with um, talking about being vision centered? Um, it is so important that we understand that we cannot be the only bearer of the visions that we have. What do you mean? I mean that in order for your vision to flourish and go to the next level, you must be very willing um, to give that vision over to someone else. Um, I say this often, we cannot do everything ourselves. And so we must be very, very careful about harboring those visions and ideas. Yes, the reason it says write it and inscribe it clearly on tablets is one, so that you can have record of it. Let me say that again, that's super, super important. You want to make sure that you have record, put a date on it, um, sign it, put your name on it, because we wanna make sure that you have an opportunity to reference back to it. The other opportunity that I see when it says, inscribe it clearly on tablets so that one who reads it may run. If you have a vision, whatever, how big or small it is, um, you can verbally give it to somebody, but if they can't see it on paper, if they can't see it clearly on paper, then it's almost as if you're just talking aloud and you want to make sure that your vision is uh, uh, communicated well to everyone um, who has an opportunity uh, to, to embrace it. And so that's so super important um, when we're talking about envisioning healthy churches, because we want to make sure that we are clear in what we are setting out to do. We want to make sure we are clear in what we are setting out to do. And so, um, so, so, so that's, that's super important. The next, the next piece to this um, and 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 I love I love this because I want to I want to challenge each and every person um, that is um, setting out to do anything. If you're envisioning a healthy church, if you are wanting to start a new program, if you want to um, reshift how you are operating in ministry, I just listened to to uh, Reverend Sam Green's presentation. It was phenomenal on branding and, and, and marketing, um, storytelling. Um, in order for that to be super effective, you have to write something down. Let me say that again. You have to write it down because you wanna make sure that you have an opportunity to reference back to it because there's so much going on and we try our best to retain everything in our little minds. Um, if we write it down, we have an opportunity um, to allow it to grow, grow, grow wings and fly. Let me speak on that for a moment before I move. 
I, I mentioned that we can't do everything. Having our vision written down clearly gives us the opportunity to, um, to embrace partnership. Let me say that again. It gives us the opportunity to embrace partnership. It gives us the opportunity to allow someone who is well versed in what we're envi in envisioning, allow them to do what they have been called to do. Pastors, if you are listening, you cannot do everything. Um, I listened to uh, uh, one of the brothers earlier share, you have to be willing to allow someone who has the skill set to do what you're envisioning. You have to allow them the opportunity to do it. The next piece that I want to share that is super important, and it falls right in line with um, being vision-centered, is be practical. So the first one was be clear on the need. The second strategy uh, is be vision-centered. The third strategy that I'm sharing today is be practical. Being practical helps us stay focused on our intentions, realistic about outcomes, and rooted in our goals. Why is practicality um, so important? It's so important because, um, yes, we can have very grand visions. We can have, um, we can look at the, the big picture. We can, many of us can see the end um, as, you know, before we even get started. But being very practical allows you the opportunity to stay focused on what you say you want to do. Being practical allows you the opportunity to utilize that GP, GPS mentality. What is the GPS mentality? The GPS mentality is when you put a destination in your GPS, there are multiple ways to get where you're trying to go. There's another app called Waze. There are multiple uh, routes in order for you to get to that destination. And being practical allows you the opportunity to, one, take a step back and say, okay, where is it that I'm trying to go? Who am I trying to reach? But also, what means do I have in order to do it? What, what do I have, not only financially, but what do I have, what resources do I have within my congregation already? Oftentimes, we do ourselves a disservice um, in, in the work that we're trying to do because we have not tapped into our internal resources. There may be, if you wanted to start a health ministry, um, it's great to have someone who, who, who has the passion, um, who has the availability, but it, it is even better to identify someone who has the skills. Many times uh, health ministries uh, flourish because uh, they have registered nurses in their churches who are willing um, to participate in, uh, in that endeavor. But we have, many times we don't reach out or tap into that because we feel as if, okay, well, they may be busy or, you know, uh, we might have doctors in our congregation. They might, their, their workload might be too heavy, but we have not taken the opportunity to say, this is what I wanna do. This is what I have in the house already. So let me, ah, uh, the word of God, the, the story um, where, where the prophet said, what do you have in your house? We have to be willing to look at that first approach to say, I have this in the house already. Let me use that in order to grow, um, grow my ministry. 
to grow my health ministry, to grow the pro to grow the youth ministry, to grow the seniors ministry. What do I have already in the house in order to do it? Oftentimes we don't have to go far. We don't have to to look, you know, beyond, you know, a one mile radius of our churches and we could find and and have everything that we need in order to do what we're trying to do. So we have to be very practical. This like I said, this falls right in line uh, with being vision centered, being being practical because when you're vision centered or when you've written down your vision on paper, there you have to be one willing to go back to it um, and look at it periodically. You have to be willing to flesh out the details because when you're writing your vision, you're not always putting all of the details down on paper. Let me say that again. You're not always putting the details down on paper because you want to get that vision out as quick as possible. And then you come back to the details. And so Practicality, it helps us stay focused on our intentions. It helps us be realistic about our outcomes. I think many times we are unrealistic in our our thoughts and our outcomes and 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 we you know we shoot for the stars. Hear me, hear me when I say that is important. It is important. To, to think big. It is so important um, to have faith. Um, but at the same time, it is also important to be very realistic in your outcome. Being practical helps you in the long run because it allows you the opportunity uh, to, to embrace failure. Why is that important? Failure is all is not always a bad thing. Failure is uh, it is an opportunity for us to um, envision differently. It's, it 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 gives us the opportunity to shift uh, our focus. And so the next piece, the next strategy um, that that I want to share is be consistent. Be consistent. If someone can drop it in the chat, I'll go through uh, where we are so far. So the first strategy is be clear on the need. The second is be vision centered. The third is be practical. Number four, we are being consistent. Be consistent. Our commitment to our goals will aid in our success. Consistency develops routines, builds momentum, and creates accountability. Let me say that again. Consistency develops routines, builds momentum, and creates accountability. Um, uh, John Maxwell, uh, a quote from John Maxwell simply says, small disciplines repeated with consistency every day leads to great achievements gained slowly over time. Many times when we're doing uh, doing work or doing something, uh, we uh, want an instant, uh, instantaneous uh, outcome. We want it to happen suddenly. And where that may happen Sometimes, many times, the slow process is what uh, yields much more success. But it is the consistency that will lead to the greater achievement. Let me say that again. It is the consistency uh, that will lead to greater achievement. And, and so I, I want to just throw this in since, you know, we're talking about envisioning healthy churches and many times we want to associate health church, healthy churches with food and nutrition. Um, if you are on a, a workout regimen or a diet plan, you understand that consistency is what allows you to reach your goals. 
So we know that we can't go to the gym one time and expect uh, to have the body or the, 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 the look that we want. It doesn't happen that way. But it is the consistency that every day um, discipline, you know, uh, uh, eating right, um, turning down from, you know, junk food and sweets, um, drinking water, drinking water consistently. That is what will allow your body to form in the way that you want it to form. That is what will allow you to have those physical results um, that you're desiring. And so if we are envisioning healthy churches, um, being consistent is something that will allow us to uh, allow our healthy church to, to go to the catapult to the next level. And so what does that look like? What that looks like is um, consistent messaging. Someone talked earlier about um, messaging. That is important um, in order to grow your ministry, consistent messaging, consistent outreach. That's important, consistent outreach. You can't expect uh, to ask somebody one time and they are gung-ho to do it. You have to be consistent and committed to, to what you're, you're desiring to do. Uh, uh, be consistent in your giving. I'm not going to preach. I'm not preaching. I'm not talking about giving tithes and offering. But in order for programs to, to grow, the internal infrastructure has to have giving as a component of it. Yes, there are opportunities uh, to apply for grants and some, you know, funding um, there, you know, I'll throw this out there, like Walmart has opportunities uh, for, for organizations and churches to apply for funding. Um, some banks have opportunities for you to apply for uh, grants. But in order for you to take ownership, there has to be someone who is willing uh, to 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 sow into that vision. There has to be someone who's willing um, to to offer some sort some resources to that vision. And so it, I believe that it starts internally. I am confident that if there are some internal infrastructures put in place where we dedicate a percentage of giving to programming in our churches that will yield more participation. 